Welcome back. It is very busy here today, but Joe and I are going to attempt to video what we're doing. There's so much going on right now in our kitchen. We have applesauce going, we're juice making. I made bread for the week. I made sweet bread to give away, collected tons of eggs that have to be washed and taken care of. Joe has been out in the garden getting carrots. Lots, lots, lots going on. So he is getting ready to make a New England boiled dinner. And I have never put that on this channel, so I really wanted to capture that. It's something he absolutely loves to make. And uh, so I thought I'd bring you along. Can you see all the juice and the applesauce and the eggs. We just have so much to do here. Okay, these are some new carrots from our garden. Also some onions from our garden. Our onions didn't really do that great this year. They're, they're all small. And these are potatoes from a farmer's field nearby. We um, like to buy from the local farmer. We don't plant our own potatoes because we don't usually use that many through the year, so we just buy them as we need them. And you can see I've got more applesauce and bread. It's a banana blueberry bread and some honey oat bread. Joe is peeling these onions, getting them ready for the pot. We're also adding a small cabbage. This is one that we got from our garden. It's probably softball size. It's not really huge, but it's perfect for this boiled dinner. And a rutabaga, which is like a turnip, but not quite. It's a whole different flavor. I don't think myself that turnips have much flavor. Uh, a rutabaga looks like a turnip somewhat, but it's more yellow. And it's a whole different flavor. The turnip is a white flesh. So this is a more creamy, um, yellowy color flesh. And incredibly hard to peel. But it has such great flavor. I'm starting off uh, putting in some Mrs. Miller's ham flavored soup base. This is something we buy at the Amish store and it gives boiled dinner a good flavoring. We use it for other things also. Um, I usually put two or three good tablespoons There's probably, this is a seven quart Dutch oven and it's a little less than half full of water, probably about a third of the way filled with water. You just want to dilute that into your water and it almost creates a broth. It just gives it the best ham flavor. Just gives it a little bit more. Sometimes you can get a, a ham that isn't the most flavorful. so. This will guarantee you get a good flavor. Okay, next we're going to put the ham in. This is a boneless picnic hickory smoked ham. Um, I usually prefer the bone in, but we couldn't find one that day at the store, so we got a, a boneless smoked pork shoulder. How many pounds is that? Um, this is... 3.34 pounds. So it's almost three and a half pounds. So it's not real, real huge, but it's all meat and that's what's good. I mean, there's some fat on it, but that's okay. Fat gives it flavor. We're putting our onions in now and we're gonna let this just simmer for probably an hour and a half or so, maybe two hours and get the good flavoring into the, the broth here. And then we'll add our vegetables, the rest of the vegetables. I forgot to mention, I'm going to put a little onion powder in also. I know we've put onions in, but just for a little extra flavoring. I 
and we'll be back. Hey, we're back and we're going to add some vegetables. This ham, I'm sorry, has been boiling now for probably an hour and a half or a couple hours, but I'm um, going to put the carrots down on the bottom first. We got busy working <laughs> as usual. I had eggs to do, we had dishes to do, we just busy all the time, production, this house, all the time. Next I'll add our rutabaga. And those are cut up in, let's see what size pieces. One and a half two to two inches probably. Let's look at them. Oops, I'm vlogging up. Let me see. Okay, those are just sliced up enough. They take a while to cook. Rutabagas take quite a while to cook, so you want to cut them up to make sure that they get cooked along with everything else and not an hour later. That's happened before. <laughs> and our potatoes are next. I'm going to leave a couple whole ones here. Uh, I'm going to use the remains of this for a pea soup. Ham and split pea soup. It smells so good here. And then we're putting our cabbage on the very top. This has just been cut into wedges. I'm going to put some pepper on this. I think there's probably enough salt from the ham. Maybe a little more onion powder also. We'll let this simmer probably for another an hour at least, an hour and a half. I'll put the cover back on and we'll be back to you when this is done. <coughs> our boiled dinner is all cooked. It smells wonderful. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Guys, come join us for supper. Mm -mm -mm. A New England boiled dinner originated with Irish immigrants who lived in New England, especially around the Boston area. They were introduced to the tradition of New England's boiled dinner. It always consisted of ham, but a brisket was much more accessible. So they usually used brisket because of that reason. They boiled it with vegetables for hours and it became an Irish American specialty. This is something that I guess we have our Irish heritage, both Joe and I. So it's something that's that we grew up with and it was very common in our families to have this dish usually on a Sunday because you know you could put it on in the in the morning and let it cook while you were at church and come home and the house smelled amazing and everything was ready for you this is a great dish if you want to feed a crowd because it will really stretch and it's cost effective. You're throwing in most vegetables that you grow in your own garden and a ham. We love this. This is, like I said, tradition in both our homes. And the leftovers are used to make a pea soup. We use the carrots, the potatoes, and the ham. And it really does taste quite delicious. It just stretches the meal into another one. And I like that. This is a real easy dish, as you can see. It doesn't take any anything to put it together. It's literally just putting everything in a pot and letting it sit. Leave me a comment below and let me know if this is something that you grew up with or if you've tried, or maybe you have a new twist on this, or maybe you don't add all of the stuff that's in here, or you add something a little bit different. Let me know. 
Joe is getting both of our plates ready and we are gonna have our supper with some homemade bread, some honey oat bread and homemade butter. Cooking from scratch really isn't all that hard. It just takes a little bit of time and that's it. But it's so worth it and it tastes so good. I'm just gonna give a little taste test. Until next time.